This week, our species is in full camo and ready to ambush anything that swims or floats by. He's delicious to eat, and with both eyes on the side of his head, he looks like a prehistoric Picasso. We're talking about flounder here on the Florida Insider Fishing Report, which starts now. Welcome to the Florida Insider Fishing Report, presented by Yamaha. Welcome to the Florida Insider Fishing Report and welcome to September, everyone. I have Captain Jim Ross from the Real Legends Central East Region joining me this week, filling in for Rick. So welcome back to the show, Jim, and just in time to help us out with our flounder show. I'll today. tell you what, you know, pre-escort Picasso is a tongue twister. <laughs> yeah, well. Why don't we just say two-day-old roadkill? Because that's <laughs> they look like they've been run over by a they truck. They really do. They are not <laughs> cute, but they sure are yummy to eat Delicious. and fun to fish for. One of our favorites, and you can catch them whether you're onshore or offshore doesn't really matter, depending on the region and the time of year. Exactly. Well, we have Dave Farrell, who looks like he's ready with the necessary gigging and jigging gear at the CCA workbench. Dave, are you ready? I'm frisky and ready to go, can yes. You, can you add another P to that? Uh, uh, piscatorial. There we go. Yeah, there you go. That, <laughs> uh, he was making it hard on himself. It's all right. It's all right. I, I kind of did that. Well, you're looking ready over there. We can't wait to get over to rigs and techniques today. But you know what? Let's start with Captain Tommy Derringer in the Front Runner Boats Northeast region, home of the Jumbo Flag and Flounder Pounderland. Hi, yeah. Tommy. How's it going? Hey, Bree. You're right. It is Flounder Pounderland. That's right. Mm -hmm. you know, we've got a fantastic flounder fishery here in the Front Runner Boats Northeast region. And this is a great time of year to talk about them as well. You know, flounder, they're going to be one of the main targets inshore this time of year. And really, it only gets better as we head into the slightly cooler months we have coming up. There's a ton of finger mullet pouring through the region right now. That means the flounder are going to be chewing. I like to target the inshore flounder on the last couple hours of the outgoing tide. They like to set up in small creek mouths and run outs. They wait for the bait fish there and they just get fed. This a little conveyor belt of bait fish to them as they sit on the bottom. Now, even the smallest little run outs are going to hold multiple fish, so don't give up on those little places. Make multiple casts in there. Uh, sharp creek bends or deeper creek holes are going to also hold those fish. I like to use a, a quarter ounce saltwater assassin jig head and either a small mullet or a mud minnow, and even a live shrimp is gonna work in a pinch. Uh, a fish bites jerk bait or a paddle tail can also be deadly on those flounder. You can just rig them the same way. And you can also target flounder around the deeper structures like the inlet rocks, you know, the docks, the bridges near the inlets, all those places are great, great places to find a flounder. Uh, just make sure you're using enough weight to hold your bait on the bottom. And like Jim was saying, you know, the nearshore wrecks are also gonna hold good numbers of fish this time of year, so you don't have to catch them just inshore. You know, no matter where you fish for them, the one thing that's always important is to let that flounder chew for a bit after you feel the bite. Now, I, I tell my anglers to wait at least 20 to 30 seconds before setting that hook sometimes because they are notorious for just grabbing the tail of the bait and then letting it go halfway to the boat. And you know, as we head into fall, look for some bigger fish to start to show themselves in those areas I was talking about later this month and into October. Those are some of my favorite doormat, uh, doormat flounder months. And speaking of doormats, I've got a picture here. Our good buddy, Captain Scott Jones, he sent me this picture of Liam Russ with a big old flatty that he caught on that fish bites jerk bait. Nice. Very nice. Fish bites. Now also inshore, guys, we had some great redfish fishing this week. <clears throat> we had some awesome flood tides at the beginning of the week and last weekend. And you know what? I'm happy to report that I've been seeing better numbers of redfish up in the grass than I've seen in, in quite a few years. It was a lot of fun to see a bunch of fish tailing away up in that Spartina grass. The Saltwater Assassin Elite Shiner did some great work for my clients this week. You know, that bait rigged on a weedless hook is gonna be hard to beat. Uh, it flies through that grass really well. Now the Bull Reds have also been chewing this week and should be a good bet this weekend. Um, the best thing I think for those fish would be to fish around the bridges on the last of the outgoing tide. But they're going to chew just about any time. Um, but you will need to use a bunch of weight to hold the bait on the bottom if you fish during uh, when the tides are ripping. Now, live or cut mullet's going to be the go-to um, as the mullet continues to fill, uh, fill in with the mullet run. Now, the low tide creek fishing should also be good this weekend. Net some of those finger mullet and fish the creek bends and oyster bars, and you're going to find a ton of smaller reds along with some slot fish mixed in there. And I've got another photo here. This is my man Scout with a big redfish he caught with me in that flooded grass with one of those saltwater assassin elite shiners. And look how stoked he is. That was 
That was a really fun fish. Little Mama's 14K action. Yeah, moving offshore, guys. I spoke to Captain Billy Hunsaker from Emma Summer Charters. He tells me the trigger fish have started to chew this week. Billy said he's finding them in about 140 to 160 foot. And his baits of choice have been cut Boston mackerel or pieces of squid. But you can also, um, if you can, grab a bonita, chunk it up. That's probably going to be ideal. That's a fantastic bait for those guys. He's using a two-hook chicken rig with a lighter wire circle hook. You're going to use that lighter wire so you can stick it in that uh, bony trigger fish mouth that they have. Uh, Billy said he likes to ha uh, have his customers fish a little bit up in the water column, not right on the bottom for those trigger fish. Now, also offshore, I spoke to a couple of our bottom fishing experts this week. They tell me the mutton and the mango bite is still going pretty strong. Those muttons are still chewing in about 120 foot and deeper east of St. Augustine. The guy said they're using a knocker rig with about eight foot a liter and up to about 16 ounce, uh, ounces of sinkers, uh, depending on the current. It's been real swift, I guess, out there as of late. Now, the best baits have been live or dead sardines. They're using an eight to 10 knot Eagle Claw circle hook. Now, although uh, most have been targeting those muttons this week, the mangrove snapper have still been chewing in those same areas, so look out for them as well. I want to get them chummed up. And I got one last picture. Captain Jason Hadges sent me this photo of his client with a pretty mutton that they caught east of St. Augustine. Beautiful way to start Take the show, it. Tommy. Great reports and uh, kicking that flounder off hard for us. I'm going to take your strike zone hot spots for the northeast region from here. Captain Tommy says, redfish and tarpon at the inlets and bridges. Look for mullet schools getting busted by the tarpon and fish for the, uh, for the redfish you want to fish on the bottom. Trigger fish in 140 to 160 feet offshore. <laughs> Try to catch some bonita on the way out and use them for cut bait. You know, those bonita are really durable as well mm -hmm. as stinky and bloody, and so well they make, they make fantastic baits. <laughs> they do. Fantastic. All right, well, I will look to my co host, Captain Jim Ross, and have you give your Real Edge in Central East Region Flounder Report live and fresh. There go we go. It. Well, I tell you what, you know, guys in my region, we love to get out and we love to chase those flatfish. And this is the time of the year we've got the mullet run kicking off in our region as well, just like Tommy did in the Northeast region. And you can find them throughout the Real Legends region right now. Uh, you, you know, most of those most of those fish are going to be starting to move from the reefs, those offshore reefs in 90 feet of water and less, start moving into the beaches. Um, but you can still find some really good fish throughout the year offshore if you're fishing for them throughout the year. Uh, most of the time we're using a, a pretty short leader, um, in fact a very short leader in some cases on a sliding, you know, sliding sinker type of scenario. You want to use a swivel and a small kale hook, works really good, or even a circle hook in that 2 aught 3 aught size. Uh, you want no more than about 12 inches a liter is what I've found works best, especially if you're fishing places like Ponce and Sebastian Inlet because the current is really strong there and the fish won't come off the bottom very far. They like to hug the bottom and so you need to keep your bait down towards the bottom and a long leader allows it to get up and away from the fish sometimes. Uh, you, another great way to catch them is just simply use a jig head. Uh, the, the Assassin Pro Elite Series jig heads work really well when you put a finger mullet or a, a, a mud minnow on them, but tidal flow is critical. You want to make sure that the bait sweeps past these fish because they're not really going to go far and that's why uh, you want to find areas that the fish are actually sitting on sandy spots next to some form of structure like a rock jetty or piling that has current. Any of our inlets will give you that. The average flounder right now is running 15 to 20 inches and I've got a picture here of a nice Ponce Inlet flounder that uh, Captain Mark Gibson uh, caught and his crew caught on some fish bites uh, not too long ago. Now, uh, staying in shore, the redfish right now, the, as I mentioned, the mullet is, is going on. And, and of course, uh, if you've been out to the beaches, you've seen that the mullet run is, is strong right now. So from Ponce all the way down to Sebastian Inlet, you can specifically pick those inlets out as hot spots. Uh, when you're fishing those jetties on the outgoing tides or on the incoming tides, you want to make sure that you're fishing pretty close to those rocks because they like to stay close to the structure but just on the sand, uh, right? just like the flounder do. And then on the outgoing tides, sometimes they'll move out into the middle of the flow, especially if you've got outgoing shrimp or crabs coming out of that inlet along with those mullet. So Mama's 14K uh, colored assassin jerk baits work really good for them. Watermelon red flake work really good as well. Um, but there's a bunch of different colors that all look like some kind of a shrimp, crab, or uh, fingerling mullet in the assassin lineup. So check those out whenever you get a chance. Most of our redfish are running 24 to 34 inches. And I've got another picture here. Captain Mark sent me as well. Uh, nice redfish that they caught up there at the inlet. Very nice. Nice uh, ponsolent redfish. 
Swinging offshore, King Mackerel. We've had a couple of really rough days, uh, you know, due to the high swells and, and that sort of thing from the hurricanes and stuff. But you know what? It's getting better. The water's cleaning up. And anywhere from about that 90 to that 120 foot mark right now, you're going to find some pretty good King Mackerel action, especially if you find the areas, the structure areas that are holding bait fish. Um, King Mackerel like to hold along that edge. And if you can keep them, you know, if you can keep that edge or if you can find that edge where it's, where it's crossing that piece of structure, that's going to be the most likely place to find them. Using r and &R wire stinger rig, uh, those tackle, the, the, that tackle company makes a fantastic rig. Put a pilcher, a greenie, a pogey, a mullet on it, doesn't really matter. You can also uh, get a couple of mangrove snapper in those same depths as well right now just as a bonus fish. Now our last species is triple tail and the ocean water starting to cool off. Bait fish run once again is in full effect and we're starting to see triple tail cruising along the beaches. Most of these fish are going to be found around any type of floating debris or weed, but you can also find them on the color change that's just outside the surf break. That dirty to clean water edge gives the triple tail an ambush area and you can find them uh, feeding on those schools of finger mullet as those finger mullet are cruising south. Two watt circle hook with a live shrimp or possibly with a, a small finger mullet on it is all you need. Uh, trim the tail on the finger mullet so that the triple tail don't have to chase them so fast or so much. And then, you know, most of those fish are mere average in two to five pounds. But you may get a couple of fish that are running up into that 10 pound range. And we've got the picture here of Keith Easel, who has a really nice one that we caught outside of Port Canaveral just the other day. That is a nice one, and that also brings back memories of you and I catching our first fish, well, my first fish. Your first you. triple tail, It was. Yeah. That was fun. That was a long time ago. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. <laughs> we, need, we need to redo that photo. I think I was wearing sweatpants and a bathing suit top. What was I doing? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Let's take a look at your that was a fashion Rodan statement. Marine hot spots. <laughs> <Yeah>. Sure. <laughs> Rodan Marine hot spots for this week. We're looking at inshore snook and redfish at the inlets. Use fingerling mullet on a knocker rig for both of these species. And then offshore mangrove snapper on that high relief structure, same place you're finding the king mackerel. Uh, use live finger mullet or cut sardines on a standard bottom ring. All right, well the central west region is giving our flounder fanatics what they want to hear next, but first Dave is giving us the tips we'll need to catch them for Academy Sports and Outdoors, rigs and techniques at the CCA workbench. We've got rigs and then we have techniques as well. Wow. This, yes. What a concept. Different. It's Imagine different. that. <laughs> doing different Imagine stuff that. this time. We'll be back. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Fenwick. Feel everything. Sirius XM Marine. Weather. Fish mapping. Entertainment. Penn. Let the battle begin. Casa Vieja Lodge. Five-star angling in beautiful Guatemala. Shallow Sport. Legendary performance. Scoozy Performance Footwear, the captain's choice for premium lightweight comfort. And Daiquiri Deck, food, drinks, friends. Well, we're back at the CCA Workbench for the Academy Sports and Outdoors Rigs and Techniques and Rigs and Techniques. Yes, as you were man, saying. we got them both. We've <laughs> we got, got them both with Dave Farrell. Well, you know, the, the flounder here in Florida, we'd love to catch them. You know, it's a kind of a late summer, wintertime fish for us oh, yeah. uh, on the East Coast anyway. Uh, when the wintertime comes, the flounder move in shore. They're, they're uh, coming in for that, that big mullet run that we have. They love to eat little, little cigar minnows and, and uh, all the little stuff that's coming out of those creeks. Uh, so, shrimp anything that's you know, oh, yeah. anything that's flooding through on the tides of the fall you know full moon tides that's what they're wanting to eat they're so they're they're waiting for it you know our season is closed from october 15th and november 30th now let some of those big spawning fish give them a little breathing room yep. uh let them go if, if you catch one accidentally during that time but they're a great fish they're really good to eat they're really aggressive usually if you find them you're going to get bites out of them they're yeah. you know they're pretty hungry fish for some reason and you know they're obviously an ambush predator they can get down on the bottom and and uh, change their colors to any color they want even on an oyster bed from a you know any color just about and you, and they disappear. It's a, it's amazing how they can go from sand and looking like the sand to yeah. looking like pebbles and rocks. To, exactly. To, it's just, they're they're they are true they, masters they really of camouflage. Are, I think the octopus is the only thing that that can camouflage itself better yeah. than the flounder. And they can even dig. You know they'll be actually on sandy bottoms. They'll dig underneath the sand and all the, they'll be covered in sand. So the only thing that's sticking up is their two eyeballs. Yeah. So you know we so that for that reason because they're on the bottom and they're waiting for that stuff. We want to keep everything. You just, usually weighted 
and uh, down close to the bottom. And when we're using baits, uh, a Carolina st style rig is the best thing to use. With a with a weight and a hook. With a weight and a hook, yeah. you know, the either a either a split shot like that if you're if you're in places where there's not a whole lot of current. Or you can use a heavier weight, and actually I have something called a bobber stopper on this one, which I like to use because you can put your weight however up yeah. or far back you need to keep it and it'll stay there. And if you're like you were, we were talking earlier, if you're fishing in Sebastian Inlet where it's like a giant toilet flushing out of there, yeah. really hard current, you're going to want your weight really close to your bait to keep it pretty still down there where those flounder are hanging. Anytime you're in a heavy current scenario, I found that by using an, a leader that's 12 inches or shorter, mm -hmm. you seem to catch more fish than 12 inches right. longer. In Even light, a knocker rig. In, yeah, yes, and in, in lighter current situations, you can go with a little longer rig like this one here right. and catch them pretty good. Like if you're up in an estuary, oh, like not Tom, away from like the, Tommy's where Tommy's zone. at. Oh, exactly. up in the Northeast region. And you can, even, you can even just put a jig head on here. And, oh, just, yeah. and bounce it along yep. or, or drift along and bounce that with a jig head and a, and a paddle tail or now, a curly tail now on you've there. got a kale hook on here correct and, and that's what you want to use that tk9 trocar uh inshore kale hook it's really a great hook for flounders because they have a really odd shaped mouth mm -hmm. a really crooked mouth with a lot of teeth in it uh like tommy was saying when they come and eat your bait especially if it's a live bait you're gonna have to let them chew on it because they kill a bait with those teeth yep. a lot of a lot of the fish that we catch are engulfing fish they they just swallow everything right down but a flounder he'll grab a bait he'll grab a, a little fish or a shrimp and chew on it and as he's chewing on it if you start setting the hook too quick you're just going to be getting your heads them. back. And the other thing is how they bite. Like you said, their mouth is sideways. So yeah. instead of biting down on the hook in this fashion, mm -hmm. they're biting on it in this fashion. Right. So when it's when the hook is a is a kale styled hook, it it rolls into their mouth a little a little better with that bend and that lo elongated bend in it. Uh -huh. It gets into their mouth a little bit better so that whenever they do, whenever you do come tight on them, yeah. you get a more consistent hookup than you do with other style of hooks. And, it, and it's just, and this is a time when you don't want to be swinging either. No. You just want to wind until it feels tight because yeah. a lot of times you'll pull it out of his mouth and he'll run and grab it again. Yep. He'll, he's aggressive. He, he wants, very he wants that aggressive. Thing. Yeah. So, you know, if you, if you, if you, and if you're not jerking it, then you're not pulling it way away from him. And if you just if you just wind until it comes tight, and then he comes yeah. out, then then you're you're golden. Now a, a lot of the uh, artificial baits we use are mostly jig heads, soft plastics, anything with a paddle tail on it. I love the the curly tails as well. Uh, that's the Bass Assassin. Uh, this one. Curly shad, and then you've got the uh, Fight Club fish bites. Uh, with the you know the curly tail as well. That's the new five inch. We're going to talk about it. New products, but you know anytime you add any kind of scent to these things it might make them actually hold on a little bit longer i also like the new pv from bass assassin that thing looks like it's made to catch flounders yeah i haven't got to use it for that yet but. and i and i love the the tips on the tails yeah the little bouncing thing bouncing down the the bottom they're going to want to eat that but any of these bucktail jigs i like to use a uh, either that or a pompano jig was the last big flounder I caught was on a tiny pompano jig with a piece of fish bites on it. Yep. You know, they, they, Once again, that scent. Yeah, well, it was, it was uh, next to an inlet, a uh, nice boat dock with a big boat hanging over a place where it was really deep. Mm -hmm. So I, well, I knew there was one down there, and sure enough, there was. You know, Had to be. <laughs> there was one down there. Well, good job today. Um, hopefully, uh, you guys and gals will get a chance to do some of these techniques and get out there and catch some more flounder. But where are we going next, Bree? Well, let me tell you, primetime flounder catching time is on the horizon in the Startron Central West region. So let's get Captain Jeff Page on to hear some of those details. Hey, Page. Hey, you guys. Good hey. to hear you there, Jimmy. And you know, <laughs> in the Startron Central West region, our best flounder fishing really doesn't get going till we get into the cooler months like late November, December, January, February. And I'm talking about in our bays and estuaries. This time of year, summer and into fall, the guys that I see that catch the best flounders in our region are out on the perimeters, the perimeters of our artificial reefs, which go up and down the entire coast. They're in as close as a half mile. They're out to seven, eight, nine miles. And it's real easy with the electronics today and the trolling motor spot lock features, especially on that road amp, real easy these days to get set up on the outside perimeter of those reef balls and like Dave said you just might need a little more weight because you're fishing in 
you know, sometimes 20, even 25 feet. But those flounders are going to eat if you get a jig or a, a live shrimp or even a dead shrimp down around that sand bottom, which is a key in using those electronics and then using your spot lock to keep you in that position. And then maybe just move around the perimeter and keep working it. And you're going to get really nice flounders this time of year. I didn't believe it until I started trying it. And it's very efficient. And you'll pick up a few other species. But the wintertime game in our bays, in the sand holes and pot holes of all our, like, Pomasola Bay, Carastia Bay, Longbar Point, and then you get down into Boca Grande, Bull and Turtle Bay. And don't forget Lemon Bay in, in Englewood. That can be a really good flounder because the intercoastal and the uh, grass flats are all tight. It's not a big, wide bay. So they'll be right on those edges of the intercoastal where they meet the grass flats. Now, you mentioned gulp, and I think you mentioned fish bites. Great bait. I like to use them on a quarter to even a half ounce jig head, depending on my depth. And I had to do it. I pulled out one out of the archives tonight, Dave Farrell. And that's my photo tonight, me and Dave oh. Farrell. That's right off the Moat Marine Laboratory dock a few years back. <sighs> All right, did y'all? Anyway, red fishing, it's officially September, and you know September and October are the best months for red fishing. And I believe these high tides that we've had this week after the hurricane might push by might have pushed a lot of fish into our estuary. I've had reports of guys up around the Fort DeSoto area, Captain Brett Norris, he's been catching them real good. And then down in Boca Grande and Pine Island, Captain Danny Latham and Captain Miles Meredith have all been having no problem finding the redfish. Up in Sarasota Bay, I've been finding them, and I've been doing better, Jimmy, on the higher stages of the tide. When they, you know they're going to be at a certain oyster bar point or mangrove point, you can pretty much count on them getting there if that tide's up to a 2.0 or higher. Now, when it drops off, you're going to fish the potholes and the ledges just like you would the flounders with that gulp or where they fish bites on a jig head, slow on the bottom. And then what I've been doing in the early morning, if I don't see the push of fish, I've been rigging a weedless soft plastic on a quarter, uh, a 4.0 wide gap weedless worm hook and get that soft, quiet presentation because it's been really calm. If you're gonna use a top water, definitely use a small one. And I've got a, a whole crew of people with Captain Griffin Deans of Slot Machine Charters out of Manatee River with some nice reds they caught up around the Manatee River. Moving offshore, Jag Grouper, you know, with the opening of Jag season, the weather's been nice and the guys have been able to pretty much get wherever they want. Fish have been in as close as 30 to 40 feet, but that 70 to 110 has been the number and live pinfish have been out fishing all the other baits. Got a really nice Jag photo tonight with a client with Captain Josh Crunier out of the 59th Street boat ramp on the Manatee River, and he looks like he's pretty happy with that gag. He's got a big old smile. Tell us about the permit, yeah, Jeff. In my last species tonight, permit, the, the water is starting to cool, believe it or not. I don't know if it was from the hurricane or just a little bit cooler mornings, but the fish are still out on the reefs and wrecks. It's been calm in the morning, so they're real easy to see. The key, Jimmy, has been going the night before and dipping the crabs as they flush out the passes. And then again, setting up with your spot lock, staying off the reef and free lining those crabs in. If it's a little choppy, put a small split shot on them. And my last photo tonight is with a really nice permit with a caught with Captain Ray Culver Jr., who I was really good friends with his dad, Ray Culver, and he was a good guy. Fish down in the Everglades with Rick. Well, I tell you what, that's a great tip about getting out and getting those pass crabs at night, the night before. Put in that little bit of extra work, Jeff, and you can come home with a nice one just like that fella did there. I'll take your uh, daiquiri deck hotspots for the Central West region from here. Captain Jeff Page says groups of redfish are starting to show together on the morning tides and throw a topwater jaywalker around the oyster bars near Turtle Bay South or Rattlesnake Key North. And then offshore, gag grouper are holding on the ledges and structures in 70 to 110 feet of water throughout the entire region right now. Live pinfish, big pilchers are your two best baits. And I'll tell you what, putting in a little bit of extra effort 
It makes a difference in the long run, Bree. It does. That's how you catch more fish. Just well, those little things. You catch more fish and just in life in general. Maybe. That's right. I don't know. All right. Put well, in the extra work. Put in that extra work. That's a wrap for the CCA Florida Star presented by Yamaha. They will be celebrating and awarding nearly $500,000 in boats, motors, prizes, and scholarships at the ninth annual Star Awards Banquet and Ceremony presented by Punta Gorda Inglewood Beach Visitors and Convention Bureau on October 7th. This year's event will be held at the Charlotte County Fairgrounds in Port Charlotte, Florida. So come join the FIFA crew and over 100 anglers who will be awarded prizes and scholarships. Attendees will have the opportunity to meet Florida's favorite fishing celebrities, enjoy a great barbecue meal, live entertainment by Plus Drinks, along with a silent and live auction. Tickets will be available for purchase after September 7th on the Star website, CCAFL Star. Org. We hope to see you all there. It's going to be a fun time. All right, the Discover Crystal River Northwest and Sea Sucker Panhandle regions are giving us some updates for all of your future flounder needs, so stay hooked. And we'll be right back on the Florida Insider Fishing Report. <laughs> you, gotcha. you almost got me there. <laughs> the Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Power Pole, Total Boat Control, Berkeley. Your fish, our science. Bahio sunglasses, blue light blocking, radically clear lenses. Sea Sucker, easy on, easy off, incredibly strong. Blue water outriggers, everything for your outdoor adventure. Kubota, together we do more. Front runner boats, performance built offshore fishing boats made in the USA. And Yanmar ASV, a leader in compact equipment. Well, Jim, as you know, Ameritrail is consistently setting the bar high with quality, customer service. So let's take a look at what they've got going on at Ameritrail HQ. Hey guys, you know when I think about Ameritrail, I think about the 20 year relationship that we've had with our family over there. Now recently they've built the state of the art facility there in St. Cloud, and boy, are they able to continue uh, to put out a quality trailer. Now, over the years, they've built trailers for me up to 39 feet for the center console boats that I've had. We also have them double axle trailers for my Pathfinder. We have a single axle trailer and low profile trailers for my Mavericks. But the one common denominator that all of these trailers have is the quality that Ameritrail really puts into the work of the trailer. We have high grade aluminum throughout. We have stainless steel calipers. You have aluminum wheels. You can get them in anodized packages, making them the color that you want. The other thing is they have reinforced uprights. All of the wires are shrink wrapped so that you don't ever have uh, any connection problems and then the wires are also really attached to the frame of the trailer so after a few miles of trailer and guess what they're not hanging down and over the years what I've really paid attention to is the wear and tear on the trailers and over the time that I've had most of my boats I can tell you that the Ameritrail trailers really really stand out and the quality of the product that they deliver to me every single year is beyond belief. So if you're thinking about getting a new trailer, consider a mare trail. If you're thinking about putting a trailer under a boat that you're reconditioning, make sure you check out a mare trail. You know, Bree, uh, having a quality trailer versus a trailer that's not set up for your boat or, or just is in ba a bad trailer altogether, mm -hmm. it's a night and day difference. It's like wearing, it's like a guy or girl for that matter, mm -hmm. trying to wear high heel shoes to run a marathon. You just, it just doesn't work. Having a trailer that fits your boat properly and is built with quality products, you don't want the, you don't even want to know the boats back there. Right. If you've got the right trailer under your boat, you have to remember, oh yeah, I've got something behind me. So that's the reason that you spend the extra money and buy quality trailers like Ameritrail. I, yes, 100% agree with you. Amen to that. <laughs> All right, there are many ways to find your dream flatty in the Discover Crystal River Northwest region. So let's go and do some grocery shopping with Captain Jeff Hagman. Flounder can be found throughout, excuse me, can be found throughout my region. As shallow as two feet, all the way out to 35 feet of water. You wanna look for them over sand holes, uh, sand holes that are on the flats next to grass, uh, offshore around wrecks and reefs that are sand adjacent and have adjacent sand next to them. Uh, they can be caught on jigs, soft plastic, shad, 
or shrimp imitations. Pearl White's one of my favorites uh, for flounder fishing. Great color for them. Jig heads and bucktails with shrimp or finger mullet behind them or even a belly strip behind them. It's hard for them to pass up. They do like some scent too. Uh, also in my region, we do a lot of flounder gigging at night. So it's kind of like you're, you're belly netting down the keys, except we got gigs on the front of the boat. We go over shallow water and, and look for those flounder at night. They're great eating fish, either fried or stuffed with some crab or lobster. Definitely on my top 10 uh, as far as table fare goes. And I got a photo here from Captain Bobby with a beautiful Steinhancher. That will work. Talk about Take changing it. colors. They do change yeah. colors, man, I'll tell you. Well, tell us, what, tell us what else you got going on this week, Jeff. Captain Jim Pollard, Big Daddy Sport Fishers out of Tampa, reports a great redfish bite. After the hurricane, Jim has found that the redfish are getting a little fired up and chasing down chummers. We got a little cooler water temperatures with all that rain we had, and the water clarity is coming back finally, and Captain Jim is able to target schools of redfish right now visually. He's using live pilchards with six feet of 25 pound fluorocarbon leader and a two aught trocar hook. And I got a photo here of one of his recent redfish trips with Captain Jim. Aww. Gotta love that smile. Well, let's go offshore. Captain Rob Davenport of Big Nasty Charters out of St. Pete reports a grouper fight has been going on and they opened on the first. So Captain Rob's been catching most of his fish in 180 to 250 feet of water. He's typically finding them right now on hard bottom or ledges using a 100-pound fluorocarbon leader, 10 to 12 ounces of lead, and an 8 to 10 aught trocar circle hook. Said dead bait right now is working a lot better than live bait. He is dropping some live bait too, but the dead bait's prevailing over the live bait right now. And I've got a beautiful gag turned in by Captain Rob. Nice. He catches some good ones. Nice. <laughs> That's for Captain sure. Captain Rob also says right now the blackfin tuna bite's been really good. They're showing up in that 120 to 200 feet of water pretty regular. He's been catching them over wrecks and bait schools. Butterfly jigs have been working over live bait, but live bait is working well too. He's always keeping a flat line out the bottom of his boat, at the back of his boat when he's bottom fishing and grouper fishing. And when he's running spot to spot, he's keeping an eye out for birds and bait. You might luck into a tuna school in between your grouper spots out there while you're grouper fishing. And I got a photo here of Captain Robs with a beautiful, nice black fin tuna. Oh, that tasty too. You know what? It's interesting, Jeff. That uh, I'll take your Ozello Keys Marina hotspots from the Northeast region from here. It's interesting though. Dead bait outworking live bait right now. Mm -hmm. But Captain Jeff says, inshore, snook around the bridges, docks, outside bars and passes. You want to use sardines or pinfish, and you can either freeline them or put them on some weighted uh, type hooks or or jig heads. And then offshore, the grouper bite, 110 to 220 feet over rock piles and edges or ledges. Use dead bait or pinfish on a standard bottom rig with an 8R trocar circle hook. All right, well, we're getting great flounder news out of the Seasecker Panhandle region, so let's see what Captain Pat Deneen has to say about these purdy fish. <laughs> hey, Bree, I tell you what, the great news is is that flounder fishing in the Panhandle. I mean, we've had great flounder fish in the past, and then they got overfished, and then there are some closed season and stricter limits being in enacted. And um, I think the flounder fishing is coming back. They're targeted heavily in the fall as they leave the bays and enter the Gulf. But you can really catch them year round. Typically, you're going to find them around some form of structure that attracts bait and where they can sit and ambush their prey. And they are either captured with hook and line or by gigging at night. Bull minnows and finger mullets are the most popular live bait, and they're typically fished on a Carolina rig with a kale hood. But you can also fish them on a jig hook, and I like to use a curly tail, you know, a, a jig jig head with a curly tail, and I'll sweeten that jig with a, a live minnow, either a bull minnow or a small uh, finger mullet. Uh, and that way, if you lose your live bait, you still have the rubber bait to keep enticing that flounder. Uh, St. Joe Bay is well known for its flounder fishing. The sea wall downtown near the marina is a great spot for floundering, as is the many sand potholes and the grass flats. And the mouth of the barge canal is really good as well. Similarly, the docks and pilings in Destin Harbor are well known for flounder fishing, especially in the fall as those flounders are leaving the bay and heading down to the belt. And there's a, a picture of a nice flounder caught this past week. They're fishing in Santa Rosa Sound near Navarre. Uh, it was caught on live bait fish along those res residential docks on the north side of the sound. So uh, we do have flounders here and they're coming back, so that is good news for you. But staying inshore, the mangrove snappers continue to be successfully targeted in all of our bay systems. 
the deeper base structures like Bob Sykes Bridge, the Destin Bridge, the Hathaway Bridge, and really any of the jetties protecting our inlets are great places to find them. A little bit of moving water also helps, especially when doing some chumming. You want to use small live baits like filters, baby herrings, or tiny pinfish. Perfect baits are numerous right now. You, you know, they're mostly along the shoreline near the inlet. Throw a quarter inch mesh cast net. To, you know, if you go for the bigger mesh net, you're going to uh, Christmas tree your net. So a quarter inch is the way to go. Uh, make sure you have a nice mess of them before you go out looking for your mangroves. Match your small bays with a small circle hook, light leaders, and minimum weight. The mangroves in the bays are running 11 to 14 inches. And uh, that seems to be peaking right now and is probably going to start slowing down. But moving offshore, uh, but we're staying with snappers. The red snapper season has been extended in state waters for the next several weekends. Hurricane Idalia pretty much stepped on the first weekend. Hopefully the upcoming weekends will be better. Uh, the red snappers are being caught on structure in the Gulf and in some instances, Pensacola and Santa Rosa, San, St. Andrews Bay, uh, typically caught with a slip sinker rig baited with live cigar minnow and herrings. But the red snappers respond really well to chumming or chunking, and you can draw them to the surface where you can free line them and bait. Uh, the, the snappers are, you know, running up to about 20 pounds. Uh, it's kind of pretty good right now. Uh, finally, offshore, the gag grouper, they've been opened back up for harvest in Gulf waters, and there are a lot of happy anglers about that. They're also structure-oriented, both man-made and natural structure. You may find them in shallower areas, but the better fishing is often at water well over 100 feet. You want to fish your baits close to the bottom, use heavy enough tackle to turn the fish as soon as you get the bite, or else that grouper is going to run you right back up in the hole. Live pinfish, grunts, but... Uh, Bonita strips, octopus, all make great grouper baits. Gags are mostly in that 10 to 15 pound range, but copper bellies over 40 pounds are possible. There's a photo there of Captain Jason Yates. He runs out of two Georgia's marina here in Shalimar with a nice gag and a really nice mangrove. They pulled off the bottom this week. Beautiful fish. Pat, real quick, uh, Jeff Hageman in the Northwest region was talking about the dead baits were actually working better than the live baits were right now for the gag grouper. Are you finding that same scenario is happening in the Panhandle region? A dead bait that's butterflied is going to be as effective, if not more, than a live bait. Great tip. There you go. All those West Coast guys are getting all the good tips tonight. Yeah, they are. Hey, Pat, thanks so much for uh, that report. Awesome as usual. And I'm going to take your Blue Water Outrigger hotspots for the Panhandle region from here. In short, Captain Pat says that the mangrove snappers near the inlets and on the deeper bay structure, and you can use live baits, make sure they're those small ones, light leaders and a small hook. And then offshore, red snapper on the live or artificial bottom in 80 to 100 feet of water. And uh, once again, live baits seem to be working pretty good, but they can be chummed and chunked, like he was saying in the report. So take advantage of the extended season in state waters. Get out there and catch a couple of red snapper this weekend. Oh my gosh, those are such pretty fish. We need an extended Oof. season on the East Coast. Right? Right, right. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> complains about it. I mean, is really happy about it. Okay, well, fish fans, from now until the end of our season, which is two weeks, we want you to send us your favorite fish picks for a chance to win one of our 500th episode prints like this one. All you have to do is scan that QR code on your screen and click the giveaway link to fill out the form. The winner will be announced on our season finale show. So good luck and tight lines. We've gotten a ton of great photos being sent in from I'll all over the what, map. Old, I, young, I can tell big you that fish, the anglers fish. that listen and watch this show, mm -hmm can catch some fish because yeah, I know the guys in my why. region, all I have to do is reach out there and say, hey guys, anybody catch one of these and I will get a flood of giant fish that guys catch you know, yes. and gals catch. You know? Yes, so Tommy Derringer did the same thing, he was asking for flatty photos. Within like two hours, he had yeah. 75 pictures it, yeah. of these massive flounder. Yeah. So, so it works. Thank you all for We appreciate all of you guys out there that make our job easier when we need help with it. Yes, so, and so make thank you. our show better too. Yeah, but we also appreciate you captains for giving them some tips to go catch those big fish. It's hand so. in hand. hand, teamwork. In hand. It's teamwork. teamwork. It's teamwork. Teamwork. All right, the Fish Bites East region is taking over your screen when we come back. But first, Dave is having a Taco Marine new product take over at the CCA workbench. We've got some really cool stuff from shirts to little lures to even some jig heads and stuff. we got all kinds of cool stuff over there. Can't wait. We'll be back.
The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Have fun out there. Penn, let the battle begin. Alta Equipment Company, where uptime matters. Ameritrail, load, launch, relax. Rodan, set it, forget it, catch more fish. Discover Crystal River, Florida. Bass Assassin and Saltwater Assassin. Best lures, period. And Maverick Boat Group, makers of premium boat brands Maverick, Hughes, Pathfinder, and Cobia. And we're back here at the CCA Workbench for the talk yes, about Trolling the Edge, new product segment. And Dave, we got a bunch of new stuff here, so let's hear about it. Well, we're going to start with the fish bites down there. That's okay. the brand new fish bites, uh, five inch dirty boxer. Uh, it's a great curly tail bait, you know, that, that doesn't fight fair. That's what they say. You know, it comes in eight colors. Uh, you get six per package. It's got a really nice, uh, supple curly tail, but it, they're very durable. And they all come with that fish bites uh, treatment, you know, that enzyme or whatever mm -hmm. they special mm -hmm. sauce they put in there that makes fish want to eat it and hold on to it. Uh, they come in eight, I don't know if I said they get eight different colors. That one there is called the counter punch, and the other one is the white there is called the white knuckle. And uh, we were talking about flounder fishing. These things are great. I like all curly tail baits are great for flounders. These would be extra special because of the fish bites. So. I started using a couple of these lately, and mm -hmm. they do work. Oh yes, they're, they're they're very good. They're a very good flounder bait. Yep, you put that on an eight eight ounce jig yeah. head, and you're ready to go. Catches flounder, reds, black drum, trout, everything. Fishbites.com. Go get some of that, and you can uh, catch you some everything. With that. Catch you some everything. That's right. Next, we've got the TH Marine, uh, 800 gallons per hour through hole live well pump. That is a straight or angle mount you know, for your boat. You know, a lot of guys will have a, a curved uh, surface they need to put it on mm -hmm, or an angled mm -hmm. position they need it, and you can do it both with that one. It's so got, you, you got two outlets there. Well, it's got a 38, 30-inch uh, 30 lead wires and a three-quarter inch outlet hose. Uh, it's got two places to, to plug in. 13.6 mm -hmm. uh, volt, pushes a lot of water, keeps your baits uh, frisky and lively, and that's what you need. So 800 gallons per minute is uh, a lot. Is what Hour. the average bay boat needs. Yeah. Um, the average flats boat needs. A right. uh, little bit bigger if you need an offshore boat. But right. this this, this would be perfect this for, for the all smaller the boats is, yes. is the perfect size because it doesn't overflow the well and blast the bait out of the well. Yeah, 800 gallons per hour. It's still still yeah. moving pretty good. Yep. And where do we find that? Thmarinesupplies.com. You can get you one go. of those. Everybody's going to rush out and get one of those quickly. And what else we got? Next, we got the, the Pure Fishing Apparel. Uh, these are available, you know, right now. This is the early September uh, at participate, participating dealers and the Pure Fishing webs website. Uh, the Pen Tees have front and back logos. They got a 50% cotton and a 50% poly blend. And as you can see, they come in long and short long sleeve. Long and short sleeve, yeah. Uh, the short sleeves are 25 bucks, I think, and the long sleeves are $30. They come in three different colors, heather, gray, the white, and navy, and uh, from small to double XL. So you can come out and go to pinfishing.com and get you one of those as and well. And let the battle begin. Exactly. Stay, stay covered up. Lastly but not least, we've got the Berkeley Driftwalker 90. These are the new size here. Uh, they're available this month as well. They come in nine colors, all the iconic bait fish colors and chromes as well. Um, they even got a little bit of a uh, scale pattern on there. Uh, it's a great finesse top water bait. You know, it's a really small bait. I like them because it does have a it does have a weight in there that little allows bit of you a for, rattle. for for a for a casting mostly for that that wet weight in there. And it's got a really small profile, yeah. which is great for super calm days. You know, when you pull up on some of those places and it's slick, slick calm in the morning and you don't want to throw a giant topwater plug in there and make yeah. a whole lot of noise. A big jaywalker or something Yeah, like that. this yeah. is perfect for that. The, they, they've got the 90 and the 110. This is, these are the so, 90s. Here's how you know when you need to use this bait. Obviously, calm conditions. Mm -hmm. But if you're throwing one of those bigger baits that you typically throw mm -hmm. and you're working it and you start to see fish waking away, away from, it. from it, <laughs> yes. this is what, that's, your, that's your key sign. Right. Downsize to something smaller like this, mm -hmm. less profile, less sound, and right. those fish that you've got turning away will turn around and come back and start yep. eating. And with that small little profile and the length of it, 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 it makes a really long uh, 
moves when you when you when you twitch it it goes for a long way nice little glide and the small profile I like especially for redfish when they mm -hmm. try to eat that thing because it's so small and the and the low profile when they come up from below which they're going to be doing with that they big old head yeah, they and their mouth like and their mouth is underneath yep. they push a lot of water and a, and a lot of those bigger plugs will get pushed out of the way these will probably go straight down. So that's Fantastic. what we want. They got nice, the sticky sharp. Three, nice sharp hooks. Yeah, yeah I felt the, that a second. The anti-rust <laughs> on there, the Fusion 19 hooks, really nice hooks, and uh, you won't have to change those off at all. And a bunch of colors. Yeah, eight, nine different colors, actually. Nine. Where, do you, where do you find them? Purefishing.com to go get the Driftwalker 90. Driftwalker Brand 90. New. Brand new. Well, Bree. Well, that was very of, interesting. But uh, speaking of brand new, what do you, <laughs> you got? A brand new bottle. I got of tin the brand cup. new bottle over here. CCA Florida <laughs> has partnered with Tin Cup Whiskey in an effort to protect the health, habitat, and sustainability of marine resources through conservation and enhancement of coastal environments. So, for every bottle of Tin Cup Whiskey sold in Florida, one dollar will go to CCA Florida, up to twenty-five thousand dollars. So, you know what? Let's whiskey our way to help CCA reach that goal. I know I can do that. All right, we're staying close to shore, looking under bait schools and probably doing a little nighttime gigging in the Fish Bites East region if we want to do a little uh, doormat action. Isn't that right, Holiday? That's the truth, Bree. You know, flounder like to get skinny and the best September flounder action in my area takes place around the bridges and the lighted docks that hold schools of juvenile bait fish. So places like the Junction Beach Causeway, uh, the Stewart Causeway, South Bridge and Fort Pierce, uh, the catwalks on those bridges are really good flounder spots, as is the South Jetty in Fort Pierce and around the Little Jim Bridge in Fort Pierce. And really anywhere there's water running out of a creek or canal in the Indian or St. Lucie River, around any of those canal mouths, um, the fish like to gather. They like to get up real, real shallow. A lot of guys will gig them at night along the shorelines and around the spoil islands. They need super clean water to do that. So most of the time they're doing it on the incoming tides. Around the bridges, the fish like to hold tight to the pilings, like in close to shore. They don't like to be out deep. That's where the finger mullet schools gather or the pilcher to minnow schools gather in, in nice and tight. Target the fish with a, a saltwater assassin, white curly tail jig or a live finger mullet. I like to put them on a jig head or a, a half ounce rubber core sinker. I'll put them on a small, like a, uh, a 3-0 circle hook and then put a half ounce rubber core sinker in front of it. Um, average flounder in my region is going to be one to three pounds, but we get fish to six pounds or more. I got a photo that Captain uh, J.J. Clarman of Stewart sent me. He gigged those nice flatties uh, along a shoreline in the St. Lucie River. Um, he does that quite a bit a lot. Yeah, not uh, too shabby. Of the year. Showing off. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he's nice. grocery shopping is what he's doing. That's what so, he's doing. The other thing inside the swell from Hurricane Idalia really messed up the snook fishing along the beaches and in the inlets, you know, right in time for opening week of the season. The storm moved a lot of fish back into the rivers, up into the intercoastal waterway. So the most consistent action has been along the seawalls of the Loxahatchee, the Ermine, the St. Lucie River, and, uh, uh, the, you know, the uh, mouth of Taylor Creek as well, and up around that bridge up in Taylor Creek. There's also been some good fish taken at night on the Roosevelt Bridge in Stewart and on the spillways in Palm Beach County. The fall mullet runs just kicking into gear, but fish are really starting to focus on mullet and topwater plugs, particularly at night. Uh, the calming weather will kick, the, kick up the beach bite on live mullet and on swimming plugs and spoons. Also look for the pilchard bite to pick up around the inlets on the outgoing tides. Average snook in my region is going to be like 7 to 15 pounds, but September is a month when we get a lot of the big you know, 20, 25 pound fish, some of the biggest fish of the year. I got a snook photo to go. Uh, Michael Falk, he got that nice uh, Fort Pierce snook. He was fishing with Captain Mark Dravo, and that fish hit, ate a mullet head on the bottom. He went old school. Nice. Well, tell us what's Get going on back. offshore, Mike. Yeah, you know, the fall blackfin tuna bite's just starting to kick into gear. The best action's in 150 to 400 feet of water off <sighs> Palm Beach County, and also around Push Button Hill in Martin County. And as we roll into September, We'll start to see more fish spread out along the reef in 120 feet of water, but a lot of anglers like to target those fish out in the deeper water to, to avoid the sharks. They like to get out to at least 150 feet. You can use anything from a live pilcher to a finger mullet, either drifted or slow trolled. You can also troll a small pink or silver or red feather or a small rig ballyhoo on a mono leader. A lot of boats will drift and chum with pilchards or glass minnows and, and uh, put a bait out behind them. 
average black fin right now is going to be 20 to 30 pounds. We're going to start seeing some really big fish as we roll into late September and early October. I got a great photo of a, of a big fatty black fin that Ooh, Michael Long got. He got that out of Push Button Hill on a live thread fin. And then the other fight we got going as we roll into fall, some of the deeper reefs and wrecks in 100 feet of water or more, they'll start to get those jumbo AJs that'll really test your tackle. Uh, places like the Wickstrom and Rankin wrecks in Martin County, the Mullifin wreck in St. Lucie County, they'll have schools with those big reef donkeys on top of them all month. And there'll be plenty of smaller fish on the wrecks in 60 to 90 feet of water. So, <laughs> excuse me, largest fish will be caught on live blue runners or goggle eyes drop down on top of the rack, although you'll get plenty of fish on jigging spoons or a live thread fin or sardine, but you know, blue runners are a dime a dozen right now, so this is a good time to grab a handful of them and, and drop them down, see how your back holds up. Average AJ is 10 to 20 pounds, but we'll see plenty of fish in that 40 to 60 pound category this month. And I got a, a photo of a nice one that Captain Rich Du Bois and Salty Dave Charter sent me. They got that AJ on the Wickstrom Reef on a live blue runner. Saying, oh, yeah, my back. That's a back wrecker <laughs> if I ever saw one. Well, tell us about Thanks. the bass, Mike. Well, you know, it's been a bit of a slow bite on Lake Okeechobee. The best action is on school fish right now. Uh, I was talking to Captain Nathan Shellen of OkeechobeeBassFishing.com. He's saying if numbers are your game, the grass beds around Bird Island are holding lots of school fish. You got to be on the water at dawn throwing a golden shiner colored chatterbait or a gold pepper shiner colored either bass assassin split tail shad or fork tail shad one of those smaller four inch shads is what's going to work on them uh, there's also been some good fish around the north shore for the guys that are fishing back into clean water throwing you know like a black grape shad colored tap out worm they rig it senko style or they'll use a houdini colored uh, uh, uh bass assassin twitch worm they'll put it on a one eighth ounce jig head and work it in that clean water and then if you come across some of the old bluegill beds the panfish aren't on them anymore, but there's still some bass lingering around those bedding areas, and you can throw a frog or a topwater plug with pretty good success. It's a uh, you know 20 fish morning on the small fish, five or six fish on the better fish. Uh, Lake is going to really make you work to catch a nice bag this week, but you can get plenty of action. Well, thanks, Mike. That was a fantastic uh, report on the bass there. Even though oh, yeah. the bite slowed down a little bit, guys can look forward to it picking back up here pretty soon. I'm going to take your TH Marine hotspots for the East Region from here. Captain Mike Holliday says, snook and tarpon at the Fort Pierce turning basin at night, fish the incoming tide with an Artemis shad or a live mullet, and then offshore, mangrove snapper in 65 to 75 feet of water south of Bethel Shoal, and live or dead sardines and cigar minnows and pinfish will work. You know, I'm going fish. to visit my friend uh, Captain Mike Holiday tomorrow, so You're hopefully we'll fishing? get one of those big old snooks, nice. September snooks he's talking about. That's good. Should be fun. That's All right, look alive, my flatty friends. We're drifting by the Dynapack Southeast and Yanmar ASB Keys regions next, so stay with us. But before we go, take a look at that QR code on your screen to enter into our world of all things fishing, including all of our social pages, new website, and direct access to sign up for our last live studio audience for our Bass Show next Wednesday, September 13th. We hope to see you here. We'll be right back. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by StarTron. Start, run, and store with StarTron. Berkeley, your fish, our science. CCA Florida, the voice of recreational anglers for over 35 years. Tin Cup, Mountain Whiskey. The Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are. Diamond Fishing Products, our reputation is on the line. Murphy's Law Sport Fishing. Book your trip today at murphyslawsportfishing.com and Strike Zone Fishing. Welcome back everyone. Flounder isn't everyone's first species of choice in the Yanmar ASB Keys region, but Captain Sarah Stanzik definitely has a few other scrumptious options for us. Go for it, Sarah. Hey everyone. Yeah, you know, flounder fishing in the Keys, it's like the Keys has great fishing for almost anything, but there's just some species you really don't catch here, like bass, for instance, or flounder. So that being said, we don't catch a lot of them here, but there's a few around randomly, you know, they're just small fish. And it's definitely not a species that people don't try to go target. If you did want to catch one, you would go in inshore into the bay or backcountry areas. 
But that being said, I don't even come here to try to catch flounder. I'm going to move right into some inshore fishing on snook this week, which is a species we catch a lot of compared to flounder. So the snook fishing has been good the past couple weeks. You know, we had some wind last week, so everything kind of got stirred up and muddy, but it's still been consistent. If you go to target snook, you want to go look around structure like mangrove islands, jetty, creeks, or down tree limbs. Live pilchards are one of the preferred baits, but they'll eat a live shrimp, too, and artificial bait. It's a pretty easy tackle setup, like a pin spin fisher 3500 with a medium to light action rod, 20-pound braid, and a couple feet of, like, 30-pound leader and a 3-0 hook. Snook are fun to catch. You know, they, they feel hard. They bite hard, and you'll feel it when they hit your bait. So they're a predator fish. Like, they're, it's fun. Uh, many of them jump and shake their heads. So it's, it's a fun fish to catch. So, you know, they do arrow aerobatics and it's fun uh here's a happy customer with a nice snook landed with captain Corey nelson oh. very nice happy in the keys go finger well what have we got uh, going moving on offshore offshore you know the mahi bite is like it's crazy it's late in the season but it's been the best mahi bite we've seen the past couple weeks so i can't help but just talk about mahi for the offshore fishing report like it's not very typical for mid-september or early september but it's, um, you know, the mahi bite is strong. There's been a lot of nice fish landed the past couple of weeks. So come down to the Keys. The weather's supposed to be really nice the next few weeks, like calm weather pattern, less than 10 mile an hour winds every day. If you want to go out to target mahi, you just head offshore, look for those weed lines and debris, look for birds working, diving up and down on bait. Have your, you know, get some live pilchards. Some kind of live bait is a good idea, but they'll, you know, they'll happily eat most frozen squid or cut ballyhoo and artificials and lures. So if you want to troll for them, you can just take artificials and cut bait too. Um, but they're really fun to catch. They're great to eat. And they're just a nice fish to go out and you know fill your boat up with. It's 10 per person. So it's a nice size bag limit. Uh, here's a nice fish that was landed aboard their relentless charter boat. Very nice. You know, it's interesting how that season has extended. It's normally in yep. May, but now it's all the way into September. Yep. I know, well, it's great. And we're not complaining. Like a September mahi bite is never a problem. So by no. all means, like well, come here and catch a mahi in Florida. Don't try to catch a, forget the the flounder. Come here to mahi. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, tell us about the lobster. Okay, you all know I love lobster fishing. So last week, Bree came down, or two weeks ago, we had a blast, but... Lobster season is open now. It's full swing. There's still plenty of lobsters around. Uh, if you're going to come here to go lobstering, look for any kind of structure, underwater structure, like coral heads, rocks, ledges, holes in the ground. You know, lobsters like to hide out in those areas. So it's just a matter of finding those spots. And then all you got to do is get your gear, like a tickle stick and a net, or Bree prefers a snare to catch them. So... And don't forget they go backwards, so you want to put your net or your snare behind their tail and not in front of them. So hopefully you just saw some good video of Bree and myself chasing lobsters around, because like I said, she came down and we caught a bunch of lobsters, me and Bree and Colin, and we had a blast. We caught our limit. And here's a nice photo of our haul. And I think maybe there'll be a second photo right after we caught Ooh. all those lobsters. We took them to Lazy Days and got them cooked. And it was like perfection. It was so good. So Lazy Days cooked them up and we had like caught a lobster, put it on the boat, took it to Lazy Days and cooked it. It was amazing. And it doesn't get any fresher than and that. No, not at that, all. I am so jealous. It was so fun. Uh, I'll bet. I mean, <laughs> in, in just in an afternoon. Yes. You just show yep, up. Two hours. Sarah's like, we got this. Yeah. And you yep. got two netfuls of lobster. Yeah. And dinner. And just like Sarah said, I mean, ledges, rocks, you know, you name it. Like they were there, and we caught them. It was it was a blast. We had some shark encounters. Okay. You know, you yeah. don't. It's we not a lobster trip without some of those. Which is typically eels and last critters. Day in the boat. It's okay. We fended them off. We got our catch. <laughs> we did fend them off. We got our catch, and it was amazing. It was great. Lazy days was awesome, and it was it was quite a fun few hours. And then I drove home with a belly full, and you know, you wanted cooler a nap, full didn't of lobster <laughs> <laughs> for a good two days. <laughs> Sarah, thanks so much for that You're great welcome. report. I'm going to take your shallow sports boats hot spot for those Keys region from here. Sarah says, mixed bag of bonefish and permit on the flats this week. Now they can travel together sometimes. So, you know, target them in the same way. You want to either cast a live shrimp or a crab, small crab, uh, at those fish that you see waking or mudding. And then offshore, the best mahi bite of the season offshore is happening right now. 
And I'll tell you what, like she said, skip the flounder and go straight to the mahi if you're going to the Keys right now. Liber cut bait near the weed lines and debris. Uh, uh, look for those actively working birds, and you can also troll lures around those. But you know that that pitch bait type scenario where you're running and gunning yeah. from from bird pack to bird pack. That is so much. That's so exciting. Mm -hmm. And as a fisherman, anytime you can you can get that kind of activity level going. Man, what a lot of fun. Great right. time in the Keys right now. Sounds like it's a good time to get down there. Yeah, between mahi, lobster, I mean, that's kind of my favorite deal right there. So snook, snook fish, like, and permit. It's all like, oh, that's free right there. Okay, let's take a look at some tournaments going on in the Florida Keys. First, we have the Key Largo Rotaries Take Stock in Children Backcountry Challenge, which allows fishing day and night from Friday, September 22nd to Sunday the 24th, then presents awards for releases of redfish, snook, and trout in adult and junior divisions. Then is the Isla Mirada Fall All Tackle Bonefish and Permit Championship October 9th through the 11th in Isla Mirada, where anglers fish for three days in three divisions, artificial fly and bait. Next is the Ladies Let's Go Fishing University and Fishing Fever Tournament in Isla Mirada, where the ladies learn fishing skills October 14th during the Ladies Let's Go Fishing University, followed by the Fishing Fever Tournament on October 15th. And finally is the All-American Backcountry Fishing Tournament, November 9th through the 11th, where anglers fish for snook, redfish, bonefish, tarpon, and permit with proceeds benefiting the Bonefish Tarpon Trust. For more information on Keys tournaments, go to flakeys.com. And Jim, the Dynapack Southeast region also isn't known for the flounder bite, but Captain Jimbo Thomas says anglers will welcome them as a bycatch anytime. Go for yeah. it, Jimbo. Hey, Bree, Jim, and Dave. Yeah, unfortunately in the southeast region here, flounder is not uh, one of our main species we catch. Now the ones that we do catch, they're usually a surprise catch while we're fishing for other species. They're usually encountered around the rock piles and the jetties, dock pilings, and on the grass flats around the sandy potholes, uh, basically, you know, structure oriented. And they're mostly caught by snow control fishermen since they all basically hang around the same type of structure. Now, baits that they're generally fall for are jigs tip the shrimp, scented jerk baits, along with small live baits like small live uh, pilchards, small pinfish, small finger mullet. And the few that we've caught over the years, they've been on small live baits typically because I don't use uh, artificials that much. And uh, fish along, along the rock jetties and the shorelines that we're fishing for snook. But to something that we do catch here, in the southeast region. Snook season opened last week and we've been catching a lot of snook uh, both off the oceanside beaches and also in the inlets throughout the whole region. Off the beaches, those snook, they've been cruising down the troughs that run parallel, parallel to the beach early in the mornings. And when the weather's calm, you can sight fish these snook with live baits, surface and swimming lures, and even fly tackle. In any areas that have bait activity, that's where you're gonna find the most fish. And we do have some bait starting to show up and then moving down the coast. Now on in the inlets, the early morning and late afternoon into the evenings have been the best on the outgoing tide, fishing with live pinfish, herrings, and croakers. You wanna get them down on the bottom, fishing with the Jupiter rig. If you don't have any live bait, you can try bouncing one to two ounce flare hawk jigs or soft plastics along the bottom or trolling deep diving lures. Now I got a photo here this 30-inch snook was caught opening day by Qatar, didn't get a last name, but he's from Montreal, Canada, and he was fishing with Captain A.B. Raymond on the Go Hard. Very nice. And I think he was up uh, in one of the inlets there. Now, moving offshore, dolphin fishing in the past week has been fairly decent. Most of the fish are being caught on and around floating debris, and the bulk of the stuff that is floating has been roughly 6 to 12 miles offshore. There have been birds working over almost all the floaters and any of the fish that are moving down the, uh, you know, moving along the weed lines and whatnot. And uh, they have been eating trolled baits. We've been using lures and rig baits. Once we locate those fish, we've been pitching live and cut baits. Now they've been eating pretty good. They haven't been very finicky. Most of the fish have been decent sized schoolies in the four to eight pound range versus a few weeks ago, we were catching nothing but little guys and there have also been some larger fish mixed in. I got another photo here. This is Kieran Kidder. He's also known as KK with some nice schoolies that we caught a week and a half ago aboard the Thomas Flyer. Very now, cool. there's also been some kingfish along the edge of the Gulf Stream 
anywhere from 90 to 150 feet of water is where they're being caught. Down in the south end of the region, there have been fairly decent bite, but to the north around Hillsborough, Hillsborough and Point Inlets, that's where it's been a lot better. And uh, the, they've been catching them on live baits, uh, pilchards, herrings, and goggle eyes. You can fish them under the kite or on the drift. But the trolling has been out fishing the live baits for the most part. You can get, uh, get you want to get your bait down deep with a planer or a wireline outfit. A drone spoon's been working good, or a pink sea witch with a bonita strip has also been getting the bites. And most of these kings have been in the 10 pound range, but there have been fish up to 25 pounds caught. I got another photo here. This is a nice kingfish catch that was off Miami, caught aboard the billing office with Captain Nelson Delator. Fantastic. Hey, real quick, Jimbo, uh, what is a Jupiter rig? How is that? How is that compared to a sliding sinker rig or a knocker rig or some of the other rigs that we hear about? It's, it's very similar, but you you have your hook, then you have about three or four feet of leader with a swivel and just a short piece of leader or in between your weight and then another swivel so your weight is kind of held in that spot so it's not going to slide all the way down to the hook so your weight can bounce off the bottom and your bait's not going to be right on the bottom preferably he's going to be you know up uh, a couple feet where the leader is allowing him to come up so instead of the weight being right on the hook where it's going to hold him right down on the bottom it's going to be you know you can make it three feet or four feet above your hook and you so can pre hold your weight in one spot and you can pre-make those rigs with different weights so that you can swap them out whenever you need to thanks for the clarification Correct. on that jimbo we really appreciate that and hopefully some guys will start using that now that they know what it is we're going to take the black oak led hot spots for the southeast region from here look for snook in all the inlets and off the beaches in the early mornings or evenings they're eating both live and artificial baits right now. And then offshore, cast live and cut baits to schoolie dolphin offshore around any of those floating debris that you see find, you find out there. That was a great question, Jeff. Yeah. All right, let's show support for our Florida fisheries where they can serve Florida's fisheries license plate for just $25 proceeds for the redfish tag. Support protecting and enhancing Florida's saltwater marine resources, habitat restoration, water quality, and coastal environmental education. Visit your local DMV or visit redfishtag.com. I know Rick said last week that he just bought four so for there his we vehicles. go. I've got for, one on mine. I love for it. For his fleet. There <laughs> you go. All right, coming up, we're seeing what our last captain has to share with us in the Casa Veja Southwest region. And it's always something good, so stay with us, and we'll be right, right back. back. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Fenwick. Feel everything. Island Lures. Tournament Tackle. The IGFA, every fish, every water, every angler since 1939. Sportsman's Adventures with Captain Rick Murphy, fishing for adventure. Real legends, available at bellsflorida.com. Dynapack, your partner on the road. And Taco Marine, troll the edge. Pull anchors have many tools. They are not just for fishing. I love it when I pull up to the beach or the sandbar and see a nice flats boat, bay boat, even a pontoon boat pull up, deploy their shallow water anchor, and enjoy their day out here at the island. Here are a few tips to help you choose the right spot to deploy the anchors and enjoy your day at the beach. First thing I need to do is decide where is the best spot to anchor the boat. I like to always take into account which side of the island or sandbar has the most boat traffic which side of the beach or sandbar has the wind or the waves rolling in, I'm basically trying to find that nice calm spot. Lastly, I need to park the boat so that if the tide comes in or out, I can adjust the boat throughout the day so that I don't get stuck. After I have chosen the perfect spot, I like to nudge the nose of the boat up to the sand and deploy my power pole shallow water anchors. I always take out the rope and chain and throw it off the front and secure the bow just in case we walked away in a big wave or the tide were to come in. Throughout the day, I pay attention to the tide and readjust the boat based on the water level, but with the power poles, that is easy because all you have to do is hit the up and the down button, and that's your power pole tip. 
Those were some great tips. Power they really were. Essential. All right, Captain Houston in the Casa Vieja Southwest region has some great snook season openers for us and so much more. So let's listen in. Go for it, Ronnie. Well, obviously, guys, you know, flounder's not common in the region, but I'll tell you what, there's been a little change. South's been really common. You know, the last couple weeks, with the exception of Hurricane Adalia that passed through our coast, you know, the winds have been east, northeast, with slightly a little cooler weather, which almost makes me think fall is on the way. But areas from Round Key South towards the Florida Everglades want to concentrate in depths of two to five feet of water. Also with areas that have clean water, and although we've lost a lot of grass, there's small patches coming back. So try to find those small patches of grass. And anywhere there's some diving birds combined with the grass, you're going to find these trout. Now, a variety of baits, including what I'm using, is the bass of sass on a little PMV on a jig head, trying to bounce the bottom. If I can't catch these fish bouncing the bottom, I'm using four inch uh, bass of sass and sea shads, and chicken on a chain, or slam and chicken, combined with noise making corks to attract the fish. And obviously those two soft plastics have chartreuse tails. The water's a little dirty, they hear the cork, they see the chartreuse tail, they lead the bait. But also I'm using the Berkeley Jaywalkers in chrome or filtered. And I'm using the 120 size. And once you get in the area of those trout, uh, they're gonna get on those top waters. But also artificial shrimp, root beer in color, especially if the water's tannic because of the passing of the storm. And I got a picture of a nice trout recently caught amongst many I've caught the last couple weeks, so I think falls on the way. Still on the inshore side, the snook. Now with the opening of snook season, we're getting mixed reports right now from Fort Myers Beach, south, nighttime intercoastal docks and seawalls with the passing of the full moon we just had last week. Guys are using live shrimp, or if you can't get the live shrimp, artificial shrimp, orange paddle tails. The colors have been white and chartreuse. Now Naples to Goodland, also daytime and nighttime snook fishing along docks and sea walls or areas of rocks along the passes. Guys are using live pilches if you can get them. If not, get you some finger mullets, live pinfish, or soft plastic paddle tails. Now the further south you go, if you can't find the clean water, the Everglades backcountry's got plenty of fresh water. You want to concentrate along points and feeder creeks, especially if the wind is blowing. Top water, uh, you want to be using top water Berkeley Chapos, cane walkers, and hijackers in bone and mullet color. And there's a prime example of a uh, recent fish just caught out off the beach in the past, and a recent oversized fish I just caught while fishing the Everglades backcountry. Before we go offshore, the Naples Take of Soldier Fishing is this weekend, Hamilton Harbor, early morning takeoff, and Gordon Pass with a late afternoon, 3.30 way in, come out and support your crew, uh, troops, fire, and police. Offshore report, Cobia. Now the reports I'm getting are mixed up, but the, the reports seem to be mixed. Getting reports of Cobia right now on some being caught on some wrecks and artificial reefs right now from Indian Key to Wiggins Pass. Now, even though the water still stirred up from the storm and dirty in some areas, guys are catching and starting to catch some of these fish. Now, a variety of live baits, especially if you can't find the pilchards, and chum up the area. Also, using live herring and pinfish, either freeline draw on the bottom. Some reports I've gotten is if it's slick in the morning, you will be finding some of these fish on top and guys use an artificial swim bait to catch those fish. Last report's gonna be the yellowtail snappers. Now the water's been stirred up, so it's not gonna really make a difference on what size leader you're using, but you wanna concentrate on wrecks, artificial reefs and ledges throughout the whole region. This seems to be one of the easier bites right now, like I said, be, being considering the water's being stirred up. If you can get some type of chum to get the fish going, whether it just be simple box chum, or if you can find the pilchers, cut up some pilchers, Guys are starting to see the herring in, in, in the early morning in the slick areas. Get you some herring, cut them up. Just about any bait drop back you can catch these fish once chummed up. You can use a flat line, there's a little bit of rate, and in the areas of the dirty water, you might want to use a bright colored jig head. And like I say, right now, these fish aren't feeder shy. Got a picture of a bucket of fish that was recently caught. A commercial guy out of Everglades City heading out to one of the offshore wrecks. So right now, weather's looking good for the weekend. Get out and catch you some fish. That's a fantastic report, Ronnie. We're going to take the Serenity Bait hot spots for the Southwest region for here. Ronnie says inshore, redfish from Gasparilla Sound, Bull and Turtle Bay using live shrimp, pinfish, cut mullet, or cut ladyfish along those mangroves. And then offshore, Cobia, Indian Key to Wiggins Pass on the wrecks, artificial reefs and towers using live large baits or five to eight inch swim baits. 
And I tell you, a swim bait bite to a cobia that's cruising on the top. Oh, pretty that's fun. A, that's a good one. Doesn't I love it. Better than that. I love it. All right, Jim. Well, doormats, flatties, flounders, whatever you like to call them, the reports are in. So if they're still yes, on they your are. bucket list, take some of the tips our captains have given you, pick your region, and go grab yourself a yummy dinner. But you know what? Stay hooked with us because we have to tell you what's on our lines for next week. We'll be back. All right, so next week we are talking bass. Yes. We will have a live studio audience. I think you can Woo. still be a part of that if you go to our website and sign up. Um, so make sure you tune in. It's going to be fun. It's our second to last show for the season. Of course, we'll be back next year, but yeah, make sure you tune in for that. I think we have an exciting weekend. I'm going fishing with uh, Mike Holiday tomorrow. You are pig hunting this year? Uh, me and the wife are going to do a little pig hunt. Nice. Hunting season yeah. coming up. Yeah. What you doing? I might be joining you, but I don't know. i got to find out what's going on at home. Oh, seconds over here. Yeah. Whatever, whatever. The family, you know. All right. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Jim. Great job as usual. Thank, Thank you. you for helping me. We'll see you next week. You too, Dave. Bye-bye.